Okay, hi guys. My name is Jen Kopecki, and I'm the owner of City Park Coffee House here in Prestonsburg, Kentucky. And I am Amy Wallen Reed, and I own Amy Wallen Photography, and I live in Paintsville, Kentucky. This is Behind the Mug. This is a podcast where we are going to be discussing the real and raw life behind being a mom and a small business owner here in Eastern Kentucky. This is crazy. Yes. So we're going to get pretty real and raw about things. We're going to talk about several different things. This is our first podcast. So weird. Woo, woo. Yeah. This is the intro We've podcast. been talking about this for like a really long time. Oh, yeah. And so we just kind of jumped into it and decided to do it because we have a lot to talk about. A lot. I feel um, like we've got some good stories for we you We have some really good <laughs> stories and honestly we just share them with each other and like you guys need to hear these stories because they're pretty good but we also feel like other people have stories to share too that are relative to being a mom or a dad even yes and being a business owner here in eastern kentucky um so i think we want to like we have a lot of ideas for this (laughs) podcast and it's not just for you know small business owners even this could be for anyone living in eastern kentucky or anywhere really yeah. artists musicians yes. stay-at-home moms yes anybody, it could be really. for anybody yeah, because the concept is we all hide behind the mug yes to live our life <laughs> <laughs> we drink a lot of coffee we drink a lot of coffee all day long yes. and i'm thankful for that because part of it is the caffeine and then part mm-hmm. of it is just like a hand-to-mouth thing. And it's comfort for it me. Is. Coffee is comfort. I'm mm-hmm. I'm right now doing a, a business pitch competition, and the title of it is Coffee is Comfort. Yeah, so it is. It and really is. part of your success story, too, yeah. which is and really Yeah, and a cool. lot of stories involve having a cup of coffee. Coffee, absolutely. So. All right, so. so the first thing that we're going to talk about today is basically we're just doing an intro of our podcast. Um, we're going to kind of talk about um, what we see where we see this going and what we want to feature and we really want you guys to be a big part of this so we want to have a lot of um special guests to come on and Mm -hmm. tell their story successes failures what's worked for them yeah what they love to do just different stuff like that yeah and we we think it'll be really fun for people to listen in on that and get ideas from us and other people. Sometimes we don't have the greatest ideas, but sometimes we have pretty cool ideas. So this is something that's probably not on our list to talk about, but I'm yeah. going to go not really off track. But do you ever have people come to you and ask you how you got started and and like want you know advice on doing a small business? Yes. Do you claim up and you're like, it's not what you think? Yeah. Like you better get a coffee cup. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And um, hide behind it. Yes. Um, so yeah, I think that's it's kind of one of the things that um, kind of sort of we're going to talk about is the successes, yes. but also the failures. So one of the main pictures that we have for this is what we expected our business ownership journey yes. to be as opposed to what it really turns out to be. And I, th- I think about the memes that are like... You know like, what I think. What, what I think. think I, we what do. I think I look like, as opposed to what I really look like when Absolutely. I'm working out. You yes. know. Uh-huh. Um. So I think that's kind of what we're going to start off with. So. Yeah. So um, let's kind of get into like our story, and hey, oh, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Stop bar. There's a door over here. Cut that. So don't. This is real and raw. I think it's great. Um, This is real life. (laughs) So we want to kind of go a little and just kind of introduce ourselves today and get you guys into what we're going to talk about. Um, throughout this podcast and kind of what it's going to consist of and it kind of it may jump all over the place because we have a lot of ideas. always jump all over the place but that's just us that's and, just how it is and yeah. honestly that's how you are too exactly. just it. so so I mean talk yeah. about when you started your business why you started your business and kind of you know wh- wh- why you are where you are now okay so um it's hard to not start like at college but I think I'm going to start there. Um, I went into advertising and public relations in college, and I didn't really know where I wanted to go with it. But I was like, I think I want to work for myself because <laughs> I'm not really good at working for other people. I'm not either. That was Just one of my big motivators. Yeah. And is I think I wanted to be my own boss. Yeah. And yeah. being a creative, like, at heart, it's like you want to kind of go off on your own little paths. 
So I didn't really know where I wanted to go with that. But I was like, hey, business will let me do any of those things. Right. So I just kind of went with that. Um, and the my advisor was like, okay, you need, you have to have some kind of, uh, it's like an internship. So what do you want to do when you get out of college? I was like, I like photography, but I don't know anything about it. So I started working under a campus photographer, um, Guy Huffman, and he taught me like the ins and outs of working my camera and what, you know, how to do a photo shoot. Like I had no idea. I didn't know how to work a camera or anything. So he taught me all of those things. And um, I was in a sorority, so we love to get our picture taken. Right. <laughs> so, you know, who was like... So I was like, selfies hey. were like a big thing. Yeah. They were just starting probably. Yeah, there weren't even sel- no, there weren't no. Even selfies then. Oh, my God, no. I just taught her age. No. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm old. <laughs> it's like 11 years ago when I graduated. <laughs> so, yeah. But. Selfies um, weren't even a thing back then, no. kids. Oh, so that's why I think they were so <laughs> pumped to get their picture taken because it just wasn't a thing that you did. Right. But, um, so I did a bunch of photo shoots, and I was like, oh, I really love this. And I loved getting to see like their personality in those pictures. I was like, what do you like to do? And that's what I wanted to highlight. So I did that. And then when I graduated, I got my first wedding gig, which was, I shouldn't have done because was I was that the way most too young. stressful thing ever. Yes, it was <laughs> scary wedding, and so wedding crazy. Photography is crazy. Straight out my, of the bag, my yeah. Best too. Is a photographer, it's and insane. I've helped her shoot some weddings. Not that I shot the weddings. I held her reflector for her. Yeah, hey, that's a big task <laughs> too. And wedding, uh, weddings, like the photography part of the weddings. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's a different world. It's scary. Yeah. So, yeah, did that, and then it just kind of went off from there. Um, I got an advertising job. Uh, actually creating ads. Um, I did ads for Double Quick, some of the like sausage biscuit pictures. How cool. I did not side. know that about yeah. you. You're yeah, the, some you're of those. The, you're I the person behind those. the sausage bi- yeah. biscuit pictures <laughs> sure. at Double Quick. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big, uh, I'm really proud of that. But <laughs> so that's my sausage biscuit on that window over there. Um, <laughs> I don't mean to brag or anything, but I know, that's my I, don't, I mean, I that, you see that billboard biscuit. over there? It's not of me. It's of a sausage biscuit, but I took the picture. So, yeah. But anyway, I did that's that, hilarious. and I wasn't, I didn't find, like, a lot of joy in that. I loved the people I worked for and worked with, but I didn't. There's not a lot of joy in a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> There is, but there's not. (laughs) Eating it, but not photographing it. (laughs) But sitting behind a desk for eight hours a day was just not my cup of tea, I realized. And I got so busy with my regular photo shoots every day that I just kind of like, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to jump into this and try it full time. And I did. And I ended up being able to provide for myself. What year was that 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 you? 2010. So I've been at it for 10 years this year. 10 years. I'm so, I'm really, really proud of that. You and I'm came really so excited. far from the sausage crazy. biscuits. Yes. Guys, if you so. haven't checked out Amy's photography, tell them where to go to check out your photography. Um, my website is amywphotography.com. And then I have a Facebook page. It's just Amy Wallen Photography. That's Amy is very talented. Shameless, shameless plug. Plug that in. Plug, plug. Okay. For real. Yeah. Her but, photography is amazing. I do want to brag on you, you for a minute. Thank you so much. Um, I, don't do it. I have an artistic <laughs> side. But do. You do. Don't, but don't, don't You're brag. You're an amazing do. artist. I have an artistic side of me, and I do feel like I, I almost went to photography school. Um, Gosh, I however, I did not mm-hmm. do that. I will tell my story in a minute. Um, but one of my very best friends, like I said, is a photographer, and I have shadowed her a lot, and she actually taught a class on lighting and photography and then I actually took that class to help her with some of her photoshop but I learned a lot about lighting and so I can I can kind of have an eye to see when somebody knows what they're doing Mm -hmm. with the camera and Amy really does know what she's doing I am not like an expert on it but go check out her photography it's it's very good thank you so much Um, Jen tell your story I'm really excited because I don't think I know the whole thing okay I will tell the whole thing like I said we're getting real and raw here (laughs) you guys Mm -hmm. Um, so I was born and raised here in Prestonsburg, Kentucky, and um, when I was a teenager, I kind of got off track with life, and I did get addicted to drugs at an early age. Um, so I missed out on a very important like 
part of your adult life when mm-hmm. you're supposed to be figuring out what you want to do. Mm-hmm. I just kind of opted out of doing that. <laughs> I was like, adult life? No, I'm no. good. Mm-mm. Um so not to get too deep into that because I feel like that is a whole other podcast that's like serious mode. Um, but I did make those decisions which landed me into having to move away from here. I had no choice but to move away from here. Um, and when I did, I moved to Dayton, Ohio to be with my sister mm-hmm. and I got a job at Starbucks to put me through mm-hmm. college. So um, I loved it. I don't know. It was so weird. Like I found this really crazy like art behind yeah. making these lattes and making these coffees mm-hmm. and it wasn't just about that I think it was also about like the hospitality side of it like yeah. actually serving people mm-hmm. because coffee makes people smile it does me it makes me smile too <laughs> and so um just being able to give people that first cup of coffee in the day and start their day off with a smile felt good to me um so I know that might sound really weird for some people but like it, it just, I don't know, I just felt like my place is in the coffee business. Mm-hmm. So then I got a job as a um, manager of a coffee shop oh, in Kettering, cool. Ohio. And I did that for a while, and that's where I really kind of, it sparked, like, the entrepreneurship side of me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I got to kind of run the place and make some decisions, and, um, like, I had a purpose for yeah. the first time. And so I totally quit college to run this coffee Turn shop. Out. Yeah. Awesome. I, and I really did. It was really... <laughs> kind of crazy but um it was uh, one of those decisions that I was just like sever college jump into coffee shop you know college but then I, I ended up um, <laughs> coming back to Prestonsburg and I worked in a in an office for several years worked you know a few different jobs and stuff but I always just craved to own my own coffee shop mm-hmm. so um let me tell you something it was a process like I knew not to just I was at least smart enough to know not to just like take out a loan and jump into it you know what I mean I wanted to learn about business ownership I wanted to learn more about our community I was scared the economy wasn't doing that great because the coal mines were going Mm -hmm. under at that time um but I networked with a small business association they helped me with a five-year projection plan and just step by step I ended up basically just finally doing it and when I did it it really was just a leap like I just leaped into doing it Yeah, yeah I did um but I felt like it was time. I prayed about it. I felt like it was time, and I just did it. So I did a soft mm-hmm. opening, and I remember going live on Facebook about a week before I opened just to be like, okay, people know there's something happening in this little tiny building. They know, that, you know, some people know mm-hmm. it's a coffee shop. Other people are walking by, peeking through, wondering what's going on. Yeah. So I went live on Facebook one night, and the amount of views and the amount of comments and the amount of support from the community mm-hmm. blew me away. And I was like, this is happening. Mm. So I just opened. I just did it. I just did it. And it's been really hard. And I think this is kind of leading into one of the things that we're going to talk about is what we expected as opposed to, like, what it's actually like. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I did this Facebook Live, and I'm like, people love this. It's going to be awesome forever. Nothing's going to go wrong. I'm always going to have support. Everybody loves me. Um. And that's not always the case. Mm-hmm. And but I did yeah. open, and, and the the response was amazing. And I sold tons of coffee. And then <clears throat> I started experiencing some of the some of the cons of mm-hmm. business ownership. People, not everybody mm-hmm. sees that side. Not everybody so. sees that side. So, like I said, you know, I have a lot of people that come to me, and I know you said you do too. Yeah. Of, you know, how'd you get started? What's it like? Tell Crazy. me. You're successful. Yeah. Tell me how you're successful. Well. My first advice is don't get too excited. <laughs> yeah, don't. Because yeah. there's a downside. It's not all rainbows. <laughs> yeah, and I remember, um, so I have a really funny story. Again, this is real and raw stuff, okay? So I'm just going to tell it. This was the first, like, panic moment that I ever had mm-hmm. as a business owner, okay? We're so, getting straight into it, guys. I'm going to just dive straight into this. So I have this employee who, um, very fresh out of high school, going into college, brilliant girl her name's Haley I love her still to this day I love her so much she is was a blessing to me up until the day she left to go to Louisville or Lexington um but anyways it was like maybe her second week on the job she had never worked in coffee before she didn't know what she was doing I was still training her I didn't even know what I was doing really (laughs) everybody's new to this everybody's this is new to everybody and (laughs) 
So it was like the middle of the morning. Everything was going good. And I (laughs) went to the bathroom (laughs) and something happened. And Mother Nature decided to make ant flow happen that day. Sorry, guys, if you're watching this and you don't want to hear that. But this is seriously what happened. And it was a disaster. I mean, it was horrible. Like, okay, what do I do? I didn't expect this. I always know when this is going to happen. Like, why is this happening? I had to go, like, get, change clothes. I had to, I mean, it was awful. And I was like, Haley, you're going to have to run this entire place for a minute. Like, you're going to have to just figure it out. Welcome to the I job. I have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so. Which, I don't have a uterus anymore, so we don't have to worry about that. So. That problem is solved. Never again. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Do I have to worry about that? So, n- Sorry. That's probably way too much information <laughs> no, starting no, off. No, never. But, okay. Never. Anyway, so I leave, and I'm like, it's going to be fine, Haley. You've, You've got, got this. this. Do it. It probably won't be that busy. It was yeah. like 9.30, 10 o'clock. Most people are at work. It'll you got fine. this. You could totally handle this. So I leave, and it was like three minutes later, she called me crying. She was like, oh, my God. You aren't going to believe this. And I'm like, no. What is it? She was like, I just got an order from the bank, and there's so many drinks, and I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm like, wing it. You got this. You got it. You've you got can this. handle it. I trained you. Let's do so, this. So by the time I get back, I'd already received a phone call from the bank because their order was messed up. It was totally just just screwed up. And poor Haley did the best that she could do, and I was not mad at her at all. But I had to come back. And I had to redo all the drinks, and I had to take them to him. Of course, I just gave them to him for free for the trouble. But that was the first time that I was like, anything could happen at any mm-hmm. given moment during On one your of the visit, first days of being open. Anything can like, happen. So yeah. brace yourself, yeah. you know, for for yeah. anything. So yeah. there's my story on <laughs> how I thought it was going to be, as opposed to life happens. Life. And you've got to mix life in with your business. So being yeah. a small business owner, you don't have a set amount of hours. And you don't have a boss telling you what time you come in and what's going to happen on this day. You are the boss. and Your boss is a jerk for the rest yeah. of your life. <laughs> yeah. And although it's great <laughs> to be your own boss, you also have to set yourself boundaries. Yeah. And you have to set yourself time when you're going to work because (laughs) as a small business owner you don't get a salary and no one's paying for your supplies you know one of my favorite questions that people ask me when they're either first starting their own business or thinking about starting their own business my favorite question that they ask is so how long was it before you started cutting yourself a check and I'm like I still don't I don't know I'll let you know I still don't I'll let you know (laughs) I'm hoping for year five I'm on year three so we'll see how that goes it's it's kind of like you don't, you're kind of scared to do that because I, yeah. I kind of, which I know my CPA is going to kill me, but I just kind of like kind of try to gauge it myself. Like, what can right. I do and what do I need? And I don't, I don't set myself up. Luckily, so, luckily you can claim so. a lot. <laughs> yeah. Our CPAs are going to gonna kill us. Let's yeah. not go down that road. Well, I just sent my taxes in and I'm like scared. I'm like, Ooh. please. Oh, which, you know, I've never gotten a check back. It really makes me either. sad. I haven't either. <laughs> and I don't. Oh. Here's the thing, though. I know now not to expect to. Yeah, yeah, I don't. You know, I don't. no. So don't get my hopes up. Uh, yeah, I'm done getting my hopes up. Yeah. It's kind of like with my um, my love life. You oh, yeah. just have very low <laughs> expectations, and you can't be disappointed. That's true. I mean, now I'm married. <laughs> I'm married, but I'm not. Then it's not. But it's okay. But we both have stories about. All kinds of stuff like that too. So yeah. we'll get it's it. It's like we'll the same, but completely like oh yeah, different. You know, we like when I started own. my business, I already had my kids, so I was like, I didn't, and it was scary. It, yeah, because when you got pregnant, you were like, oh my god. Yeah. Now what? I got pregnant. What's gonna happen to my business? And I was like, um, I was like, what's gonna happen to my kids? <laughs> yeah, it's like, wait, wait a minute. How does this work? Because you don't. Yeah, you can't just kind of like leave your kid and be like hey I gotta go work well that brings us to this okay so City Park has you know it's fairly decent size I'm blessed enough to where I have a place where my kids can come and hang out Mm -hmm. which is really cool except not really because my kids think this is their home they're here and I cannot tell you how many times I have to tell my nine-year-old daughter Marley put your shoes back on you aren't home you're in my lobby with bare feet (laughs) 
You're in my business, my place of business. Yeah, you can't pick your nose <laughs> while I'm so making funny. drinks. Like, you, so oh, they really so do funny. feel like this is their <laughs> second home, and they definitely treat it as that, which is cool because the community, you know, I think they like to see families running businesses. Yes. They like to see people, you know, they like to see your kids involved in your business and stuff like that. Yeah. So it is kind of cool. But it's very stressful um, when I'm, like, making a latte and yelling at my kids, like, stop fighting. <laughs> You know, I'm Generally, trying to steam this milk. Quit <laughs> punching your sister. Generally, <laughs> that kind of stuff is hard because you is don't really hard. know like the balance because you are your own boss. You're like, where where's the line? Like, where can I? What can I do? And what can I do? It's you can decide. You know, yeah. But what's best for you and what's best for your family and what's best for your business? Yeah. It all kind of you know that's together. actually one piece of advice that I do give people. Not that I'm like the ultimate advice giver. Like I don't mean it to sound like that I'm. The only person people come to for advice and stuff, but people see business owners who have been thriving, and they do tend to lean towards them to ask yeah. those kind of questions. I don't know. I just oh, felt yeah. like I was being boastful, yeah. and I felt like I had no. to justify it. I'm just gonna hop no. behind my mind. No, no, it's no. Fine. It's I'm good. Fine. It's good to give advice because, regardless, like we can give the raw and the real advice yeah. to them because it's something completely that they may not see. Like, yeah. I don't show everything that happens on the other well, side. of course not. You know? Until now. Until now. <laughs> when the cameras are on us, we do it it's now. It's all open now. Um, but one thing I do tell people is um, be consistent. You are able to choose when you're open and when you're closed. Yeah. Don't close because you're tired. Yeah. You just you know, I see a lot of business owners, and I'm not – necessarily putting anyone down I would tell anyone this if they asked me for legitimate advice like I see your business close because you are tired or because mm -hmm. of whatever but like unless it's like a dire emergency like I'm open mm -hmm. and you are and that's that's the kind of person you are you're very like reliable and very you know you're consistent with that but if you if you weren't consistent people would think well people call you out on it. let me tell yeah. you something I'm gonna tell this story yeah. real quick mm -hmm. so through uh, my divorce over the past year I was exhausted mm -hmm. in a different way okay like I was getting to the point that it wasn't even healthy for me to be <laughs> here it was like a really mm -hmm. bad week and towards the end of the week I was just like I literally don't think I can. Mm -hmm. And I had never been like that. But now let me tell you something. I went through a lot, a lot. And it was on a Saturday. And I didn't have any workers. And I was like, okay, I'm three years in. Not one time, not one time have I taken a vacation. I haven't gone anywhere. Now I knew I was signing up for that. You know, yeah. I was like, well, there goes my vacation life. There goes everything, basically. And... <laughs> But I knew I needed to tap out, and yeah. I was I was literally yeah. crying over it because I was like, I well, you need a break. I can't work no. tomorrow. Yeah, you can't. So it was on a Friday, and I put a note on the door. I messaged all my regulars. Mm -hmm. I did a post on Facebook about how important it is that you can't pour from an empty cup. Like that was my post on Facebook, and I left town. Mm -hmm. I went to my sister's house mm -hmm. in Ohio and spent the weekend. I had people so mad at me. I was like. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Like, you guys have no clue yeah. how consistent I have been for three years. So, but mm -hmm. that just kind of went to show me, like, should I have done that? Yeah. Honestly, for my mental state, yes, I should it. have. I had to. You have um, to give yourself those breaks. From the business side of it, I can see where it would look bad. But it's, like, something that I have, like, preached and preached and preached about consistency for three years. Yeah. And then the one time I leave town, people are just, oh, my God messages after messages coming through yeah where's my i need my coffee i need my coffee and i'm like oh my god you can't like you have to give yourself those you those times to. because i deal with the same thing and it's kind of like i don't have a shut off so like when since i am since i do run my own business like i don't have a time where my facebook is off or my, my messenger know. isn't off. My email isn't off. It just floats it's all there. throughout the day. And, like, I'll get a message at home, you know, at 8 p.m. in the evening when I'm there with my child. And then they'll be like, hey, can we book, can I book, you know, prom session for, you know. So you don't April. have, like, this is Amy's office time. Yeah. You can schedule no. your, have you ever thought about like, that? Like, I do. Like, I kind of do. But it's like, if I get a message, I'm still like, People are still hey, yeah, I'm like, I'm not at my desk, yeah. but I'll get to you in the morning. Like, you... <laughs> I've got to have those boundaries. You have boundaries. to have those boundaries. Yeah, and it's not, I'm not upset with anyone, but it's like, because I don't have these set hours, like, like 
you know, a regular, like a normal, like nine to five business does, it doesn't mean I can answer messages, you know, off the time, right. you know, I have to have a balance of that. You know, I give yeah. myself three weeks to get a session completed or I, you know, I give myself until the next day to get a message answered. Right. So it's hard. It's to stressful. Have there's a, there's a lot of pressure on small business owners and it's mm-hmm. something that's really not talked about enough. Yeah. Um, so, okay, let's move to the next. We have, like, okay. bullets. I have some bullets, and I've kind of went way off. It's okay. But, I knew it would happen. Um, yes, me too. So, let's – I'm just going to jump around, and we're going to now tell just, like, a funny story about ourselves or something funny about us that people wouldn't normally know. Okay, go. Um, I'm really into true crime podcasts. and po- So, like, when you said podcasts, I was like, oh, that would be fun. But I'm really into, like, murder stories. Please don't be scared of me. I'm not a murderer. But I just, I'm really Are interested you? in these stories. No. But I don't know something do about that. <laughs> I'm saying no. <laughs> but joking. I've always been so interested in the murderer's mind. Like, how can you be that? How can you go I that it. far? I love, I love you know? watching documentaries about... Um, about murders and like yeah. like I like listening to them talk from the jail about why they did it and yeah. stuff like how can you go that far to hurt anyone that badly I just don't see like how it could happen so here's a funny it's crazy funny fact that will go along yeah. with that about me oh, no. oh, oh my god I'm am scared. I really gonna tell this okay <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna tell now. it oh. so a family member of mine went like really deep into like um ancestry and like mm-hmm. uh family looking at the family tree and how deep it goes and stuff and like deep deep beneath the roots of my family tree i'm related to charles manson really (laughs) i didn't know this about you now i'm I'm scared i'm so sorry i'm really intrigued at the same time i'm like oh maybe i could uh, (laughs) dig a little deeper into this that's crazy isn't that crazy charles manson i haven't checked my ancestry but now i kind of but then i watched a documentary on him and i'm like don't relate to him jen He's don't like relate to anything he says. Don't do it. It's don't crazy. do it. It's I didn't. Wild. I didn't relate and to like anything he, Charles Manson it's, it's said. It's so crazy. But I could, yeah, I could talk about true crime podcasts and like true crime all day long. So if you want to like yeah. talk about that at any moment, we might get into that. Yeah, we can I do a it true be, crime podcast. That would be so just fun. just separate. Just like do a whole other podcast. So on the flip side of that, I do get into mm-hmm. the the podcast. But then like, there's this really odd side of me that mm-hmm. I like to watch. Um, cartoons that my kids used to watch even though i'm 36 years old and my kids are grown now cartoons um, are cool it's something okay. about them brings me peace and yeah. so if i'm cleaning house or something like have the cartoons i may have blues clothes on i don't know it's fine that's a different crime oh my god it's like kid crime <laughs> <laughs> kids solving kids in crime solving the podcast. solving the <laughs> mystery oh my god it's crazy that's so funny yeah, we both like solving cases it's, it's if crazy. i was actually solving a case though i would like to solve like a really intense murder case like i think i could be an investigator yeah i really think i could nail that i told sam i would always i've always wanted to be a um <clears throat> what's the word a detective a detective yeah if i didn't have to go through the police academy i would totally be a detective because i love that true crime some... forensics yeah. like because I love murders, I guess. Like, I was like, that would be such a cool thing. And to, like, be able to try to figure out, like, why they've done certain things and, like, Like the psychology of it. it. Yeah, and, like, yeah. bring families peace and, like, figure all that out. Like, I just think it would be really cool. But, um, okay. so, we want to talk about the creative mind, too. Like, why we we have these ideas and how what we do with them and where they go from our mind kind of like this a lot of times me and amy don't get our creative ideas past the table yeah like oh (laughs) this would be great we're just like and then we're gonna do this and this and this and this Mm -hmm. and this and then we don't do any of it but then this though we did yeah we're like you know what we're gonna try this out and it's just kind of how our minds work. I feel like yeah. if you're creative, you probably understand. And by um, the way, we couldn't have done this without Kevin Horn being yes. the production Kevin, behind we love it. You Kevin. So Kevin Horn gave us these microphones, and he's recording it, and he's producing it, and he's doing all this because otherwise, me and Amy would probably be sitting at that coffee table over there, talking about how we wish we could actually do this. So this would be yeah. I had no idea because I don't know nothing about that <laughs> side of it. So I it's don't really either. Cool. I just have the creative ideas. Yeah. 
and they just flow. It just comes, yeah, it just comes to us. And with this, like, I really feel like because I, the way my business works, I'm not, 90% of the time I'm by myself. If I'm not on a photo shoot, oh, I'm alone at home to have, editing. To have like or, a, a go down a rabbit hole yeah. of creativity. Yeah, it's because hard. Because one minute you're working on pictures and the next mm-hmm. minute you're sol- solving a <laughs> murder. Murder crime. Yeah, murder. It's all over the place. <laughs> but it's like, I feel like something like this is going to be really good for me too if we let's bring on some really cool creative people as guests to talk about their story and so if you have a really good story we want to hear it um oh my god we want to hear other people's stories so much and share those with other people and discuss like what's worked for us and what hasn't and what could be good for you and just some funny stories about our life and things that we have been through and our successes and our failures and and all of that there's lots of failures um, and it's okay to talk about them yeah i have failed oh okay <sighs> let's talk about, talk about events that we have okay speaking of creativity <laughs> we both have these. speaking of creativity you get these you know a lot of times the events that i have here at city park will be triggered by what's going on in my life yeah you know what absolutely. i mean like if i'm in a really creative phase I may really want to focus on an art gallery to bring some creativity in here yeah. or something like mm-hmm. well, right now I have my own art in here and it's just kind of sitting there like a knot on the it's log pretty though. but <laughs> pretty I really want to do my own reception but I'm holding back on that um, but anyways um a lot of my events are usually triggered by what's going on in my life mm-hmm. is that just me do you do this oh thing? I do the exact same thing. um yeah. so a, a, a lot of my events have been pretty successful some are a little less than others but you know like we had a I did have a photography event in here where I had some local photographers put up uh, their favorite photos in the gallery and they mm-hmm. invite their family and friends and we had a huge reception had a musician here I think I did I think I submitted a picture but I wasn't able to be here I think that you are right because we were trying to figure yeah. out like I, I knew I weren't yeah, here during I had, that yeah I, I um, but now. I was just like, you know, that could be a cool thing. Oh, my gosh, mm-hmm. it was huge. I mean, there were people parked up and down the road. Awesome. I was worried I didn't have enough cups. I was. Yeah. It was so big, and we had such an awesome time, and it was such a moment of unity in the mm-hmm. community of all these photographers supporting each other, so cool. which you know is a huge deal. It's huge. Um, artists and musicians. I mean, it was just such an awesome time, you know, and I was just so humbled that, that day. Um so we've had some very successful ones like that that were just started as a spark of an idea. Like, yeah. hey, I know what I want to do, and I'm writing down ideas, and I put it into action, and it just gets yeah. curated into this awesome thing. It was great. Um, then there's some times that it's just some people show up, not so much, you know. Um, like the the Christmas thing that we did. I mean, did uh, pictures with oh, Santa. That was awesome. Um, so good. That was huge. I mean, there were people lined up Great. both of both doors, and you, how much money did you raise we for the Shriners? Two thousand dollars for Shriners. Yeah. That day. So that was like a was huge great. event. Um, that's not always the case, though, guys. <laughs> for example, <laughs> we have examples. Here's my example. This is so <laughs> embarrassing. Like, I cannot believe I'm admitting it's this. It's fine. It happens to all of us. So we all have these. As we know, because I've already said it like three times, I got a divorce over the past year. But again, it's totally fine. Um, I have really had some pretty bitter relationships. I have not made the greatest decisions. I'm sorry if you're one of those decisions and you're listening to this. I'm just going to hide behind my mug again. We don't know who's going to be listening, but if you're listening, cheers. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, the, anyway, those things happen. It does. Um, it's just part, it's just part it's of it. It's part of life. Um, but with that being said, it did trigger me into creating a very, um, <laughs> bold event for Valentine's Day. I forget. Love Bites. Love Bites. I was trying to be clever because we were going to have food. It's good. And I think it's cute. It was actually pretty I cool. I think it was a really good It was good a cool idea. concept, but it was for singles only. Singles and you had painting. Like we were going to do painting. I say we were going to do because this was a fail. <laughs> Nobody registered. That was guys. the plan. We were going to paint and we were going to eat. We were going to paint we were gonna and, and listen to music. And so I advertised it as this is a singles event. Come out. You don't have to be alone on Valentine's Day. Yeah. Um, it's going to be catered. Let's be together. Yeah, let's be together and Please don't let me be by myself. And then you were by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody registered. 
but nobody registered. You and put it, was, it out there. And, um, Maybe oh they God, all found like, love. Maybe everyone was with someone else. I did get asked that on a date, See, though. And I went good. and it was fun. See, so um, maybe it worked out for the best in the long run. I guess. I was really <laughs> hoping to make some money. But, I mean, the date was good and everything. It was a good but date. I was really hoping to make some money that night. Um, and because not just to make, God, I just have a really greedy just no, then. That is no. not what I meant. We have businesses <laughs> for money. Business side of me wanted some to make some money. money. The creative side of me wanted to do something unique that had not been done Made in that. the community and yeah. let it be something that was cool. Yeah. It was not cool. <laughs> but it was not cool. That's Nobody just part it. of it. And it's okay. Well, because I think, okay. And somebody did say to me, um, are you worried that people are going to feel weird about being like, I'm single on Valentine's Day. Can I come do this? And I was like, but I'm trying to just let it be funny and let yeah. us like all just hang out. Because well, like, that's your personality. You're like, hey, let's do this because it's going to be fun stuff. and it's like, okay to be uh, by yourself. Seriously. You could even bring your spouse or your boyfriend I to I went live with one of my friends to do, a couple of my friends actually. Uh, Patrick Davis went down to Kick and Ash with me mm-hmm. and there was like a little diverse group of people there. Yeah. Some were single, some were not. Um, to say, you know, what does Valentine's Day mean to you? Yeah. And we just had this hilarious conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And still, as much as I promoted it, I advertised it, I was funny and clever about it. It was going to be awesome. It didn't happen. Okay. So. And that well, was actually the first event that I've had that you had to pre-register for that was like crickets. Crickets. Well, and this time of year is hard. Like, it is. It's very hard for a lot of small businesses, including my own. Like, I'm basically weird free from yeah, from January to March. Like, there's not a lot going on for me. But I have the same kind of story. Um, there's a lot of the times that right now, you know, this time of year, I try to, try to have an event of some sort that would be um, – you know good to drum up some business and have a few things going on in the the down downtime of business but i like to try to schedule the boudoir sessions right around valentine's day tell too. them what boudoir is though okay if you're not if, if, i know what boudoir is yes. it's um, it's very um i like to do it very classy but it's, it's um, sexy. like yeah it's a like sexy little photo shoot um sexy. lingerie and you know just kind of uh but make it really fun and mm-hmm. uh, classy, I did and it one not. Time. You did. I did too. This is so did. fun, guys. And they're they're Ladies great. Did a station it's with not Amy. scary. It's not you know creepy. I'm not like, hey, go over there and be sexy. Like it's no, Take like your off yeah, to be like sexy. it's not like that at all. You can bring a friend. I always say, bring a friend. Bring mm-hmm. a bottle of wine. Like it's fun. Yeah. And it's it's not as scary as you think it is. And it's so empowering. Even if you do, I tell women, do it for yourself. Yeah. Like, Mama's totally impromptu. See, it's like great. I was doing something else mm-hmm. with a group of girls yeah. and doing like fitness pictures and stuff. And yeah. when it was over, one of my friends was getting boudoir, and I was like, I want to do. I want to do it. And it's so, so fun. I changed clothes. And I did it. And I, I was love like, it. I can't believe I'm doing this. I love it. And it's something you can be like, hey, I did that. And yeah. the photos don't go anywhere. I, I'm the only one that sees them besides you. Um, and <laughs> they're completely private. You can show them to whoever you want. But I, I keep them, you know, clo- you know, on lockdown so that they're not out in the open. And then it's just something you can have for yourself. And it's really cool. But... I decided this year, I was like, I'm just going to gauge it, see, like, how many people. And because I don't show them on Facebook, no yeah, one really can really see them. You can't really advertise that. Yeah, and no one can that see what I'm doing. Yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, then I, I was like, okay, here here are the dates I'm going to do it. Like, send me a private message if you're interested. Um, I had some interest, but nobody booked. And I was like, okay, okay. but it's God, okay. It's like a jab to the gut. It, it is. is, and it's so. I'd rather look at somebody look at me and say, "I think you're ugly," than to not register for my event. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm, I'm like, you know what? I had I had one or two that were like, "Hey, are you still doing these?" And then at that point, I was like, "If there's only going to be one or two, I'm not." Yeah. It's a lot of work for me to put in to create a set and spend the money on it. So I was like, "No, I'm not doing them." Do you think people might not understood what they were, or do you think it was Maybe. just? And I think it's the time of year too. It's like no one it's wants to spend three hundred dollars. It's after Christmas and everyone's trying to lose weight. I'm seriously, ladies, and we that, all feel fat right now. <laughs> yeah, and that me too. And it's like I don't. <laughs> nobody really wanted to spend three hundred dollars right. on something that you know 
was completely private and you couldn't be like, hey, I got this yeah. purse. No, yeah. hey, I got this door station. But it's okay yeah. because we have these successes and these failures and and it's okay to have those because everybody does. Yeah, um, that's true. Everybody but, does. And that's one of the biggest things I think that is important about this podcast is to mm-hmm. hear other women yes. in the Appalachian area talk about their failures. And it's not all roses with small business. It's great to be your own boss. That's a that's an awesome thing but at the same time it's scary and it's raw and it's hard and it's it's a nightmare sometimes it is it's scary but But i love what i do oh my gosh like there's such a dark side and such a bright side to it like i count my blessings every single day but at some point almost every single day i say to myself is it worth it? Mm-hmm. But every night when I it's lay my hard. head down, it's like, I know it's worth it. I couldn't imagine myself doing anything other than photography and giving photos to people that they can cherish forever. Yeah. It's something you're not going to have. Like, so you're not going to have. Gonna have had, okay, so we've talked about funny stuff, and yeah. we've talked about, like, a lot of different stuff. Yeah. But, like, what is the most inspirational photo oh my gosh. That, that you have ever done? Like, because, oh. I mean... That's a really that's a really hard one because I've taken photos like just recently I took a, a photo session for a lady and her mother um, who's battling cancer. Her mother was battling cancer and they hadn't really had any updated photos of her and yeah. she was losing hope and and being able to do that photo shoot like I did it really quickly like within a couple days of her asking for it and it's really hard for me sometimes to find time in my schedule especially in the summer like it you know yeah I don't have a lot of time and I I was like yes I will definitely do these for you because it's such an important thing and because you know that might be their last picture yes and And it was so fun I know that yes and it was so sweet and she was such a sweet lady and it it was so great to see her happy and even though when she was so you know sad in this really dark place it was just yeah. really I mean my photo shoots me. really fun too and, and sometimes sure. sometimes photographers um I think lose passion on what they're doing mm-hmm. I think we all do it's not just photographers yeah. but yeah. Anytime I've seen you working, there's been passion behind it, and she makes Thank it a whole you. lot of fun. So I'm sure they well, really appreciated that. Even, it's really, yeah, even when I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is such a really hard time for them. Like I'm like, no matter what, this is a happy time right now, mm-hmm. and we're going to show that, and we're going to capture that. And she was with her grandson and her daughter, and they just had a great time. And she passed away a couple weeks ago. And to see that. I'm going to be able to give her, and she gets to have those photos for the rest yeah. of her life. Like, That's it's awesome. just really happy. It's a really happy and positive it is, thing for me. It is a me. very positive thing. And births, oh my gosh, birth sessions Ugh. are the most amazing thing to photograph in the world. And I've never shot something so emotional. I've been to a lot of emotional weddings like and a lot actual, of emotional things. Like, the moment of... Like, Being in the, yeah, in the room when the baby's wow. born. Yes. I bet that's awesome. It's awesome. And, um... Do you take pictures of it coming out or after? <laughs> so sorry. No, that's... I'm, we're getting raw. I'm okay. serious. So, like, I'm not being funny. Like, no. do you actually it's, shoot it's up to the, the vagina? Like... Yes. Well, it's up to the it's up to her. It's up to the mom. I, I mean, I ask. think that's cool, like, and I okay. wish I had that. It's awesome to see, and yeah. I don't get. I haven't You've done a lot seen of that. that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so jealous I photographed right now. it. Yes. So can I go sometime? <laughs> you could ask them, but I'm not sure if they'll want you in the room. <laughs> but no. Oh, so my goodness. one of um, my first birth that I ever photographed was one of my sorority sisters, and it was her her third child. And she she was like, I would love for you to be there. Like, I think this would be great. Never had this done. Like, let's do it. So she called me. And because this was her third, I guess it was just more. She was just like, hey, whatever. Yeah. So she goes to the hospital just to get checked because she was feeling a little funny. And she's like, I'm, I think I'm going to go. So she drove herself to the hospital by herself. And and she gets there. And they're like, yeah, you're, you're close to having this baby. So she calls me. She's like, hey, I'm at the hospital there thinking I'm going to have the baby soon. I'm like, Okay, because she was in Lexington. I was in Prestonsburg. Yeah, so I was like, okay, I am leaving now. Don't move. (laughs) Don't sneeze. And she was fine. Yeah, she was fine. (laughs) She was like, it's fine. It'll it'll be fine. Don't worry. So she was really chill about it, and I was a nervous wreck. So it it would have been me giving birth. I mean, it was crazy. But that's funny. She, um, I get there, 
and um, I go in the room, and she's still just really calm. And by then, her husband was there, and um, her mom and his mom, and um, they didn't know what they were having either, which was oh. awesome. I was like, I'm going to be one of the first to people to know oh what gosh. she had. That is so cool. So we get in there, and it's me, her husband, the doctor, the nurses, um, and she literally pushed for maybe five minutes, and the baby was there. Like, it was a really easy birth for for me to for it to be my first one you know <laughs> like I was it like was the, oh it was the easiest birth I've ever done yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like it sounds crazy but it was so beautiful and like to see like okay it was a girl like and she was like shoot all of it like I want to I want you to thing. shoot the whole thing and I did and it was just the most amazing wow. thing because I mean baby was there I didn't and everybody know was did crying that. I feel like I know you really so well and I had no great. idea that you it actually was awesome. did that and the pictures afterward just to see like how happy they were and um to let that her other children see the baby for the first time I got to see mm-hmm. that too and it was just gorgeous just amazing experience like wow. and I get that to do a, really a couple cool more this year I get to do 12 I was hoping you to need do twins somebody this to year. hold the reflector <laughs> okay well, it's crazy it? because they have that big light mm-hmm. over top, and it's like, boom. Like, the vagina is, like, glowing. Lots of camera action. So, baby is, like, right. Yeah. It's, so, I don't even need a reflector. I like <laughs> how you like, were like, boom. it's that boom. big. Yeah, it's not that. <laughs> okay, that's bad. <laughs> but, oh, no. But it's just a really oh, awesome. I'm just going to leave it at that. It's just a really okay. awesome experience. Well, I have a very, like inspirational customer yeah. I guess you could say and it is cancer related too yeah. but um, at City Park we have a lemonade the lavender lemonade mm-hmm. Amy loves lavender lemonade oh gosh I want um, but what we do is we steep the lavender flowers to get the lavender water and then we juice the lemon so it's a very organic lemonade and it's made with stevia instead of sugar um, but I have this customer who she at the time had breast cancer mm-hmm. and one day, her and her husband had stopped in here to get something on her way to chemo, and her stomach was upset because of the treatments uh, mm-hmm. bothered her stomach. And she got that, and she swore that it settled her stomach. Oh my gosh. So every time she would be passing through here mm-hmm. to go get her treatment, she would stop and get lavender mm-hmm. lemonade because she said that when she was done, she actually felt good and oh. and had. You know, wasn't nauseated, and yeah. she would like take her kids to the park that day and, and awesome. all that. And so she, I mean, she, they started buying it from by the gallon. Oh like they gosh. would drive from Knott County all the way here mm-hmm. just to get it, so that after her chemo treatments, she could have the she energy have, and feel good to play yeah. with her kids at home. And she swears that that's what did it. That's so yeah. awesome. And it's like you know, here I am, like lavender well, lemonade sounds awesome. It's delicious and it's it's it organic is great. and it's healthy, but like. The health benefits that lavender yeah. actually has for you, like, are totally not talked about enough. Yeah. Like, it is super, you know, inflammation in your stomach yeah. and all kinds of different things. Um, that's but that's so just cool. one thing that sticks out yeah. with me is, you know, yes, you don't expect as a, as a small business owner to have these fails. Mm-hmm. But you also don't expect to get in touch with such such inspirational oh people gosh. and like have your soul literally touched by some of your customers. It's crazy. I had I had another story. It just came to me like from that. I just did a senior session recently, and um, such a sweet lady and her mother, and um, we took some photos on a porch and um, next to a window, and it it kind of gave a reflection of her in the window. So she was leaning against it, and then it was like a double, like her, she was here, and then there was a a shadow of herself on the other side. And um, I sent sent the gallery in, and um, I I didn't really hear anything for a while. I was like, oh, no, maybe they don't like the photos. Like, I'm scared. Um, But her mother sent me a, a private message a couple weeks later and was like, I just want to apologize for not getting back to you sooner, but every time I looked at the photos, it just brought memories back. And she actually had a twin that died at birth. Oh, I just got chills. I think it was at birth. It may have been before. But she's like, when I look at that photo of she her, I see her sister. And I was like, oh, my goodness. And she was like, I just want to thank you. Who would expect 
something like that to be triggered from doing a photo shoot. And I had no idea. That's crazy. I had no clue. And I was like, she was like, it's like she was there with her. Oh like my getting God. her senior photos thing. She would have been a senior too. Like and I have chills literally <sighs> on the bottoms of my feet, I think. When she told me, I was like, oh my goodness. And I hope it's okay that I tell a story because I haven't really told anybody. But it was just an amazing that is, thing that to is like, I gave her the opportunity to see her her twin mm-hmm. in her senior photos and, and then you lie down such and, a, and you're like god i don't deserve these no it was I just like do anything. this I just job <laughs> this career has brought so many like great things to my life like i couldn't imagine doing anything else i couldn't but, imagine doing anything else either it's great and i hope it lasts forever Me too. for both of us so i want to tell a couple funny stories and then we may wrap it up after yeah that, i feel think. like we've been sitting here for <laughs> Five hours. It's been so fun, yeah. though. Okay, so I'm going to tell a couple funny stories um, of requests I've had. Oh, yeah. Just a we couple were of talk funny about, requests. Oh, my goodness gracious. I can only imagine. <laughs> I mean, it's coffee crazy. requests are one thing, but picture it's requests. crazy. Okay, go. So I've had a couple exes ask me to do their weddings, which was weird. But, I mean, I had no, no obvious, you know, like feelings anymore right. but it's just like so it wasn't like either? a rub it in your you face sure? like come take my picture so you yeah. can see what you could have had no I mean, no no look what you're missing no. out on Amy. i am happily I'm totally, happily married totally joking she's <laughs> happily married it's her so husband funny. is a jewel um okay but <laughs> i had a high school like a, a guy that was really close to me in high school really good friend asked me to do boudoir photos of him and his then girlfriend together mm. it's like that's a little I just kind of acted like I was okay with it, but I didn't know what to price it at yet. So I was like, let me get back to you. And I oh, never God. did. So I was like, I have no, I have no like feelings for you. No, but, but it's, it's just like, weird to see I'm, your friend. Don't want to see you naked again. I'm with, sorry. And with this girlfriend. Why do I say these things? I don't know. I'm just not comfortable <laughs> with couples boudoir. Some people are, and that's great. You go for Especially it, but I just don't think you know I can like do that. It. Yeah, and if I know them, I'm like, ooh. I don't know what to tell did you, you to do, do it. I did not. Okay, good. And I didn't get any other questions from him, so I was like, okay. Do you think he was like, mm, I shouldn't have asked that, or do you think he maybe? Was, do you think he was like, why don't she do this? That's weird. Yeah, no, so he funny. was super nice. Okay, like, I, but it was just like it came off like I was like, did you really just ask me to do that? Uh, but no. But I didn't do it, and it was okay because I'm glad you did. I don't do think it. I'm going to do that. So if you're out there looking for a couple's boudoir. Photographer, if you are I'm not an, your girl. If you are an ex <laughs> of Amy Wallen Reed, please don't ask her to take naked pictures of you. Don't, That's don't. all. But he wasn't even an ex. He was just a friend. But <laughs> it was just still, it was just so weird. I don't know. <laughs> um, and then I had this guy come ask me to do like photos of him like dressed as a cowboy, and he was like, "Okay, I want to talk about this. This is <laughs> hilarious to me <laughs> because we started talking about it a minute ago." <laughs> Well, okay, so I get a random <laughs> phone call from this guy, and I don't really know how he got my number because I don't put my phone number out there. I only do, like, messaging mostly, like, online or email. I don't do a lot of phone stuff. So he just calls me, and he's like, where are you located? I'm like, so I, I told him, but I was like, maybe I shouldn't have. I don't know. I was home alone. Like, I didn't really okay. think about I you didn't think your address, through. did you? I did. Like, I told oh, him no. where I was. I told Come him where on I over, was. cowboy. <laughs> Well, I didn't know that. that was what he was even in the market for. So, oh, my goodness. So he gets in there, and he's like, you know, he's probably like a <laughs> mid thir- like late 30s, early 40s guy. I don't, I don't remember his name. I don't – I didn't even – yeah. So he comes in, and we sit in my office, and he's like, hey, so this is what I'm picturing. He's like, I'm from Ohio, but I love, like, show horses and, like, the whole, like, horse lifestyle. <laughs> I was like, so do you own horses? He's like – no okay he's like but can you think you could get some horses <laughs> but i wish i did like where do you think we could go where there are horses for this photo shoot and i was like well you know i'll look into it i'll see where i can find some horses okay. some um horses. so he's like so i want to be dressed as a cowboy he's a wannabe cowboy yeah he oh, was. my God. He, he didn't wanted look you like a cowboy. to capture the moment of his dream. <laughs> I guess. Of being a cowboy. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. And so he's like, I'm going to have a cowboy hat. I'm going to have the chaps. I'm going to have the whole, like, cowboy look. And so I don't know. I guess he was going to have pants under the chaps, hopefully. I don't think he would have pants <laughs> or underwear this under the chaps. This is just a weird That's request. Yeah. And so I was like, you know, I'll look into it for you. I'll try to get some show horses 
I, I didn't really know where to go with it, but I got his name and his email, and he left, and he didn't murder me, which was good. That's good. <laughs> I was really, it was just a really, ner- like, I was really nervous about it. It was just a, a strange request, but... Um, yeah. Did so you do Cowboy, it? No. I'm kind of disappointed, though. I know. Like, I really wanted to see where that was going. I should have. And I told Sam about it afterward. I was like, this and is Sam said no. request. And he was like, well, if you were going to do it, I was definitely coming with you. I was yeah. like, okay, yeah. Well, I may too. Yeah. I'm like, definitely going to be there. He wanted to be there just to watch. But I, I guess it was because I never found, yeah, <laughs> I never found the horses for him. I don't know. I never heard anything back and from And to him. see if he's a real cowboy or if you were like... Creating him into a I think cowboy. That he just wanted to be a cowboy one for just like a cowboy for a day. Just cowboy you, for a day. You should advertise. I should have done minis. Cowboy, cowboy for a day for minis. minis. <laughs> oh my god. Yep. And That's then so funny. only then a really quick story. I know I have more, but I did a photo shoot um, during a tornado, and I didn't realize that that was that happening. Is- the most um, amount of dedication I've ever heard from it a small early. business owner. It was really early on, and it was um, like 2011, probably. And it was an engagement session, and it was out in this beautiful field with this barn, and we were in Moorhead and like rolling hills and gorgeous set. And so the couple was coming up from this barn, and the sky got really dark all of a sudden. And I was like, "Oh wow, that's beautiful!" Right? Like, I the, showed the, the picture like the this artist is awesome. in you is like, "This is cool. Is We're about to get blown away." And I'm going <laughs> to photograph the moment. I hadn't checked my phone or anything to see what was going on, but then we get in the car, and it's like tornado warning for Moorhead. Like it was happening, like right there. Oh my god! But somehow, like we didn't. Yeah. Didn't get blown away. Didn't get blown away, but we got the beautiful picture of a tornado. Like, well, it wasn't tornado in the picture, but it was right. just like the clouds. In my head, I'm seeing a tornado yeah. go by with his engagement <laughs> sessions. You guys being really wind calm, blown. but wind blowing everywhere. Yeah. And like the there face are pictures being... of that. Like there are pictures of tornadoes in the background. The of face pictures, being smushed in, yeah, and, and it was the teeth, scary. Lips flapping in the wind. Yeah, it was. It was. Scary. And they're like, "But I love you so." But much. it didn't. Yeah, it like we were okay. Photos. Everyone's okay. Yep. Scary, but. I've not really had any strange requests. I mean, at a coffee shop, I mean, I did have one guy ask for eight shots of espresso in his drink, and I refused uh, to do that. That's a little scary. That's like a bartender saying, like, you you got to be cut off. Yeah, like, I had never really had to cut somebody off with caffeine. I've been cut off with caffeine in Nashville. I went to Coffee Fest, and they had the Nitro Pro Brew, and I was my first time having it. And I loved it. And I was like, oh, this I is want, so can I get another sample? That was delicious. And, and like, no. they were like, yeah, you can have one more. Okay. And then my ex-husband, at the mm-hmm. time, he was, we were still together, and he doesn't drink coffee, yeah. which is, should have been my first time. I'm just, <laughs> What's wrong with you? Can't, can't do this. <laughs> should have known. Red flag. Oh, um, anyways, he didn't want his Nitro Cobra, so I drank his. And then we did a walk around the vendors, and I ended up getting another one. But they didn't know that they didn't recognize it was me until mm-hmm. halfway through, and they were like, um, "You've already came through here a couple of times. We can't give you any more." And I was like, "I'm sorry, I didn't mean to waste your product." And they're like, "No, no. you can't consume that much." Let me wow. tell you something. I had to leave there. And go to the hotel room because I was seeing oh these God. little like fuzzy <laughs> oh things no. that weren't there, and I got sick. Like oh I got sick as a dog, and I had to lay down. And I mean, I'm not kidding. Coffee like I was in tears, <gasps> That's crazy. wanting the feeling to go away. Like I felt like oh it was a gosh. really bad high. I wouldn't have thought about that. That wouldn't that. go I away, yeah. and it was it was bad. Wow. Yeah. So there is a thing as too much coffee. I didn't know that. Totally thing is too much Speaking coffee. Speaking of that, did you know there's a cold brew? I think it's a cold brew, like, festival they're having in Lexington soon. I did not. Well, I'm going to have to look that up. And we'll, we'll plug that in a little while, too. Yeah. But I have to send that to That's you because I'm very cold interested. Cold brew festival? My best friend posted it on Facebook because she was interested. Okay. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this would be great. We're going to have to so talk more about So we have that. to go there. Do we yeah. have any more bullets? Because um, this was so much fun. I know there's a lot more, but maybe we could save that for next time. Okay. Because there's a lot we want to talk about. And we're going to we're gonna bring in, we're going to get us a Facebook group or page. And that way, we're going to maybe set up an email so people can send us their stories and stuff. Yeah, send your stories. Yeah. And then we can tell them, or you mm-hmm. can tell them. You can come on and tell them. Um, yeah. Funny stories about being a business owner, a mom. Yeah. Oh, there's so many things about being a mom yeah. that weren't covered here. Um, we'll just, post some topics like yeah. that, we, that, we, that you may have a story on. Like, and different stuff about Kentucky, too. Like, I want to hear some crazy stories and some stuff that I could just read on the air that would be, like, really interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Lots of different topics. Being a yeah. single mom, being a 
a married mom. I mean, yeah. we got so much going on of the same kind of thing, but then yes. like we have also like deeper stories. We do. We have um, a lot. So yeah, there's so much to talk about. I'm excited. Yeah. This is a cool first this episode. Was, I'm really entertained. Good. I I mean I don't know. We're Hopefully, entertained. Yeah. I've Will had other fun. people be entertained? Hopefully. Let us know. Yeah. So Let we're us know if we're, this entertained you or if you're like <laughs> these girls. Get back behind the mug. Keep it behind the mug, girls. You don't have to listen, but we want you to listen. Please listen. And we want to tell your friends to listen. And we're going to have some, you know, hopefully some cool content for you. Yeah. More content coming up. I think we should cheers. Hey, let's let's cling. Maybe that can be our little thing. Goodbye. Goodbye. (laughs) Goodbye.